when I heard that ethical hackers get paid to hack into companies, find security problems, and help companies fix those security problems. But not only that, they can also do it remotely. Right then and there, I decided that this was my dream job. But last month, I found myself helping a colleague of mine. Her name is Kate, who has just finished her Google Cybersecurity Cert to become an ethical hacker. Kate initially was intimidated by the requirements that ethical hacking jobs have because they universally want you to have at least the offensive security or SCP, which is not a beginner friendly it's very challenging which led Kate to feel like an absolute imposter I'm not gonna lie the OSCP exam is really hard they give you 24 hours to finish the exam where you need to hack into at least three to six machines so you need hardcore technical skills to pass this exam and I remember I felt disheartened when I was trying to become an ethical hacker when I saw the requirements of the OSCP and how challenging of an exam it is so I want to solve this problem and make ethical hacking accessible to people who have zero technical knowledge so I went ahead and I created created a roadmap for Kate that will progressively build her technical skills in a step-by-step -step manner, which will enable her to not only pass the OSCP exam, but also land her first ethical hacking job. So she could get paid to essentially hack into companies and help them fix their security problems. So this is the video breakdown where I will show you exactly how to do it. It doesn't matter how old you are or at which life stage you're at. If you follow this roadmap, you will become a hacker. And this video is my gift from me to my younger self because I wish I had access to this type of information but it's also a gift from me to all of you who always supported me the Unix guy crew and who always leave nice comments so let's get into it starting with foundational knowledge Kate has just did an internship at the company I worked at but the task she did had nothing to do with ethical hacking she was part of a team that I manage and we do security consulting so she helped me out with some security consulting engagement and some cyber security strategy work which is not related to ethical hacking but when I learned that she wants to do technical work and that ethical hacking might be the best job for her I recommended that she starts with the Google cybersecurity certificate which is the certificate that I recommend that you do because it will not only cover the foundation and knowledge that you need but there are three more reasons why I recommend the Google cybersecurity for anyone who wants to start in ethical hacking it comes with hands-on practical labs that cover three very important areas the first one is Linux as an ethical hacker you will be running the majority of your tools using an operating system called Linux so in the certificate you will get a chance to learn Linux and get your initial practice with Linux. Reason number two, you'll get a chance to practice and learn MySQL, which is a database. It's really important because in ethical hacking, we have a type of attacks called SQL injections. So it's really important to learn how to deal with SQL and the Google certificate will give you a chance to learn the basics of SQL. And the third reason is it covers Python. So you'll get a chance to run basic codes. We call them scripts in Python. As an ethical hacker, you will need to at least edit scripts or maybe write some basic scripts which will come in really handy when you try to pass your OSCP so I want this to be the start of your journey it should take you anywhere between a month to three months to finish this certificate which brings me to the first pro tip if your goal is to becoming an ethical hacker do not waste your time on multiple choice based exams and this includes things like CISSP, CompTIA Security Plus and Network Plus and CCNA and A Plus these certificates have nothing to do with ethical hacking trying to learn ethical hacking through theoretical certificates is like trying to learn how to swim by reading a book. It doesn't work. Think of ethical hacking as a trade. You need to be doing exclusively practical certificates. Now, after the Google certificate, we need to continue to build that foundation. And to do that, I recommend a platform called Hack the Box. In this roadmap, I want you to get the annual subscription from Hack the Box because we will be using it at the foundational phase, but also we will be using Hack the Box to build our portfolio of practical projects. So the cheapest way is to get the annual subscription and it's really cheap it's about 135 bucks and the first course that we will do from hack the box is introduction to networking in the google Cybersecurity certificate you would have learned networking concepts so we need to do this course just to make sure that we don't have any gaps in our knowledge but i don't expect you to spend too much time on it because you've already learned networking now the second course is linux fundamentals again you've got your introduction to linux in the google Cybersecurity certificate but here i want you to have yet another chance to practice even more Linux. We need to be really comfortable with Linux. We don't need to become Linux system administrators or Linux engineers. You definitely don't need to become a Unix guy, but you need to get really comfortable using Linux. So this course will give you a chance to practice in a safe and controlled environment so you can build your confidence
confidence and build on top of it. The third and last module from Hack the Box that I want you to do is an introduction to Bash scripting. Bash is the name of the shell that comes pre-installed with Linux. Remember, in the Google Cybersecurity Certificate, you learned Python, which gives you an introduction to scripting and programming. Bash scripting, while it's a little bit different than Python, but there are a lot of similarities. So again, this will give you a chance to learn Bash and see the differences between Bash and Python, because when you do your OSCP, you will run into situations where you need to edit a Bash script. So it's important for you to learn at least how to read a script and change it. This course will give you a chance to write some basic codes in Bash. Again, I don't expect you to take too long in this course because you've already done some Python in the Google Cybersecurity Certificate. This will increase your confidence as you go through more courses related to ethical hacking. It's really important to feel confident. Remember, you are on a mission here, so you need to get comfortable with studying every day because you have a goal of becoming a hacker. Which brings me to the next step, learning to hack. This is where the fun begins. This is where you will do your first real world hacking. In the past, when I was trying to learn to hack, I got literally yelled at an internet forums and people there called you an idiot or an imbecile for asking any question. <laughs> no matter what the question is, you will have an army of insecure individuals telling you that you're an idiot and you need to read the manual. Um, this is a tutorial for how to read the manual for dummies. It was really common to tell people just go read the manuals. But because of that, I decided to make it my life mission to make cybersecurity knowledge accessible to literally everyone. Hence why I created this channel. And if you ever run into any insecure individual who try to put you down to feel better about themselves, send them my way and I will take care of them. Luckily, today we have a way to learn ethical hacking in a control environment without being yelled at, which we will do through the first certificate recommendation for you, which is the EJPT from eLearn Security now acquired by a company called INE. This was easily my favorite certificate to do because the slides are clear, the videos are clear, and you get to practice every hack, every attack in a small controlled lab where you will log into machines in the cloud and you will hack them and then you will learn the technique this way. The exam itself is also a live exam where you will log in and try to hack several machines. Again, this is an entry-level hacking exam, so don't feel intimidated. And if you've done the background foundational knowledge that I told you about, you will have an easy time passing this certificate. It can take you anywhere from one month to four months depends on how fast you learn but this bring me to the second pro tip that I have for you on the internet you will find some people who will say things like EJPT is not recognized by HR filters I have no idea who started this myth that there is an evil HR person with a filter who is incapable of reading any CVs and that if you do a certificate that they don't know about, then they will reject you. I can promise you as a hiring manager, this does not happen. This is a myth propagated by people who either don't work in the field of cybersecurity or maybe they are a security analyst somewhere in the company, but they've never hired anyone. They have no idea how the hiring process works. So yes, even if people in the HR or even in the cybersecurity industry don't understand AGPT, I can promise promise you, we're not idiots. We know and understand the topics that you've learned. So we understand what SQL injection is, what XSS injection attacks are. So you can put these keywords in your CV, you'll be absolutely fine. Which brings me to the next step, passing the OSCP. If you've done all the courses that are recommended so far, and if you've passed the EJPT, you should have a fairly good idea if you really like ethical hacking or, or not. And if you don't like ethical hacking, that's perfectly fine. The things that you've learned in the EJPT, trust me, it will come in really handy for you if you want to be a security analyst, for example. So if you decided that ethical hacking is not for you and you want to do some blue team work or you want to become a cyber analyst, then once you finish the AGPT, I highly recommend you follow this roadmap that will explain to you how to become a security analyst. But if you want to become an ethical hacker, then this is the time where we start to prepare seriously for the OSCP. Just a bit of background for you on why the OSCP is really popular and it's kind of the industry standard. This has a historical importance because when the OSCP was released, we didn't really have any practical certificates. We only had things like CISSP or and maybe CompTIA Security Plus at the time. So having a certificate that was fully practical and it was hard, it was the only certificate that can prove that you actually know how to do ethical hacking. This is why it has the historic recognition. But there are many issues with the OSCP. The first thing is that when it was first introduced, the company that it introduced it, Offensive Security, the material itself left a lot to be desired. So if you go through the material and try to do their labs, you'll get stuck so many times. And yes, I understand that it's important to get 
get stuck and solve these problems but I think they took it a little bit too far. So the material itself didn't really cover everything that you need in the labs which created a lot of frustration and they had this mantra that says you need to try harder and harder and it made people go and start Google stuff and frankly speaking they built so many bad habits. I don't agree with this approach of teaching. I think a training material should be sufficient for you to pass the exam and learn a topic. You will get stuck more in the real world but I don't think you learn anything with having a material that doesn't cover everything in the exam. Luckily things have changed so we have at least two companies that provide world-class penetration testing exams but the material is sufficient to teach you the subject and gets you comfortable with it and help you pass the exam. The first one again is from Elan Security. It's the ECPPT. It's very challenging but you will learn so much and the best thing about it is that it costs $400 to do the training and the exam whilst OSCP unfortunately cost $1,500 so it's a huge discrepancy in the price. So the ECPPT topics are very very similar to the OSCP. So my recommendation for you is to do the ECPPT first, get really comfortable and familiar with the topic, pass the ECPPT which will make the OSCP a lot easier to learn and pass. But that's not all. There is also another alternative to the ECPPT. Again another certificate that also cost about $400. It's from TCM Security. It's called PNPT. The topics are extremely similar to the OSCP and the ECPPT but the quality of the material is a lot better than the OSCP. It's another opportunity for you to learn the exact same topics that will make passing the OSCP a lot better and a lot easier. So which one should you do? It's totally up to you. You can do either one or you can do both but once you pass either one or both then you can go for the OSCP. The OSCP will cost you around $1,500 but it will give you 90 days access to their labs which should be more than sufficient to pass the exam if you've done the ECPPT or the PNPT. But the real question is if someone has done their ECPPT or PNPT do they really need to do the OSCP? Well the good news is there are more and more companies that will hire you without having the OSCP. If you've done the ECPPT or the PNPT then you are someone who knows how to do ethical hacking. But I still want you to do the OSCP because I know it will not only open doors but it will also make you a much better hacker. It will give you another chance to practice the same very very important topics. Now if you've been watching my videos you know that I always encourage you to apply to jobs. So as soon as you pass either your ECPPT or PNTP start applying for ethical hacking jobs and put in your CV that you're currently studying for the OSCP. You never know you might get hired before passing the OSCP. Which brings me to the next section building a portfolio. Like I said ethical hacking is a practical skill and there is no better way to prove that you have this practical skill than by having practical projects and a portfolio in your CV. So now this is the time where we will again use our annual subscription to Hack the Box. Hack the Box have a catalog of practical projects for you that you can do and they range from easy to medium to hard. I strongly recommend that you do the easy one and then you move to the medium and then ultimately do the difficult ones. Those projects will not only give you a chance to review some of the stuff that you've already learned from the certificates but they will also teach you stuff that you haven't learned in those certificates. Because trust me penetration testing and ethical hacking is a lot bigger than the OSCP. Once you pass your OSCP you will know that there are many many things in the world that you still don't know. So doing these small and controlled projects will give you exposures to topics that you haven't learned but also it will give you a chance to practice some of the topics that you've already learned but from a different perspective which will make you a much more confident candidate in the interviews. This will improve your confidence so you will apply to more jobs, you will be more comfortable talking about these topics in interviews and you will ultimately land your dream ethical hacking job. Trust me if you spend 12 to 18 months doing these certificates and these practical projects and adding them to your CV getting your first ethical hacking job will be inevitable. You will get your first ethical hacking job. Which brings me to the next section getting your first ethical hacking job. If you've reached this section you may be wondering what about degrees? Do people really need degrees to do ethical hacking? In my opinion and in what I've seen in the industry penetration testing jobs and ethical hacking jobs they don't really care about degrees. This is the place where people care the least about degrees because like I said it's a practical skill. If you can demonstrate that you can do the job then you will be hired. It doesn't really matter what degree you have if you haven't passed your OSCP or if you don't have ethical hacking skills no one will hire you. So the focus here is on gaining those skills. But the good news there is something a little bit unique about penetration testing and ethical hacking that's different than the rest of the cybersecurity jobs. From my experience I found that people who work in ethical hacking are some of the nicest people that I've met in the industry. They are generally more humble, they are more approachable than people who work in the rest of the cybersecurity industry. I still don't 
don't know why. I think maybe because they do very challenging work. So usually it's humbling. I have no idea. But this is good news for you if you're trying to land your first cybersecurity role. What I told Kate to do instead of just applying to jobs blindly, I told her to go on LinkedIn, search for ethical hacking jobs, and then instead of just applying, go to the company that's hiring and send a message to the hiring manager. So in her case, I told her to send the following message, say, hey, my name is Kate. I've just passed my Google cybersecurity certificate. I'm currently working on EJPT with the goal of passing the OSCP. I'm really interested in becoming a penetration tester. And I'm wondering if you can point me in the right direction. She sent a few of these messages and to her surprise, someone told her that if she passes her OSCP, he will hire her because they are looking for people. And this is not unique. I've seen it over and over again. Trust me, companies are desperate for people with skills, but there is a serious shortage of people with certificates like OSCP or ECPPT. Those certificates prove that you actually have the skill, but this will lead you to do the coolest job in the world. You get to hack to companies, help them fix problems, and you never know where this will lead you. I know some people who work in three letter organizations or in the military, you can do some really, really cool stuff, but that's not all. This brings me to the next section, which is beyond ethical hacking, advanced specializations. Ethical hacking itself is a very, very broad area. It's an ocean. So what you learn in the OSCP and other certificates is really an introduction to hacking. Yes, you will be doing cool hacking stuff, but trust me, there is so much in the world of hacking. Luckily, there are cheap and accessible training courses that will give you skills beyond the traditional ethical hacking. For example, hacking mobile phones and hacking iPhones and Android. This is a skill on its own that yes, the skills that you've learned in the OSCP will help you, but it's not sufficient. So luckily, both INE and TCM have practical courses that will teach you mobile penetration testing. You can do this as a specialization on its own. So you can be an independent contractor who does mobile application penetration testing, or you can be part of a company where sometimes you do normal penetration testing and sometimes you do mobile application penetration testing. Again, if this becomes your passion and your hobby, you will naturally want to learn more. Another area that I think will be a gap for you is web application penetration testing. This is something that the certificate that I mentioned will touch on briefly, but again, on its own, web application penetration testing is an ocean. So a great start for you to build your knowledge is again another course from INE called Web Application Penetration Testing Professional. And after that, there is a very niche area called exploit development where you get to develop exploit. The scope of this is beyond what this video is about, but here is a link to a course from Offensive Security. They are the providers of OSCP. So have a look at it. This is something to aspire to once you become an ethical hacker. Kate at the moment is at the AGPT part of her journey and she is enjoying it so much. I can see the change in her mood and on her confidence, but she wasn't sure that she wanted to do penetration testing. In fact, it was my advice that I tried to steer her into penetration testing. Previously, she wanted to do consulting because that's what I do. And she looked up to me after she worked with me in some engagements. So if you're not sure if ethical hacking is for you or which cybersecurity specialization you want to do, which by the way, is completely normal and expected. I created a detailed video with all the cybersecurity specializations, but I also went through the pros and cons of each specialization in this video. So I recommend you check it out to help you decide which specialization that you want to do. And I'll see you there.